Hello, Edward here from 088. In this session, we're going to be talking about user definable keys, or UDKs as they're known for short. Now, UDKs are available on the full size Flex only. Okay, so on the Flex S consoles, the S24 and the S48, um, they don't have UDKs available. Uh, you just have playbacks that you can record to. Um, but when it comes to the full size Flex, you've got the addition of your UDKs, and that's these four keys here. Those are our user definable keys, uh, which we're going to be looking at today. So those UDKs, they can be three key functions. Um, so they can either be channel data, they could be shortcuts, or there could be some advanced functions. And, and we're going to be exploring those today. So the first of those then, channel data. Uh, and all we mean by that is we can record a lighting state directly onto one of those keys. Um, so that's really useful if you've just got a lighting state that you use regularly, you could stick it on a button. Um, but also places that you might find that you end up using that is things like having a smoke machine on there. Tap a button, you get a blast of smoke. Um, other uses could be things like blinders if you're doing more live events. Um, really useful for house lights as well. Tap the button once, your house lights come on. So let's explore that and let's see how we can actually get some uh, lighting states programmed on. Uh, at the moment I'm running Phantom Xeros. Um, Phantom Xeros is allowing me to emulate a flex console uh, on my laptop. Um, and what I can also do is I can connect my uh, Phantom Xeros to capture visualization software. So on my screen now, top right, I've got a uh, window of capture visualization software. So that's going to allow us to see our lighting changes take effect uh, as we go and program the console. Um, so I'm going to go and close my virtual front panel window and I'm going to go and open my external monitor. So this is what I would see on the external monitor of my console. Uh, and what we can do now is I'm just going to go and create a lighting state uh, and I'm then going to be able to go and record that onto one of my uh, UDKs. Um, so I'm going to go to my groups, I'm going to double tap on a group, I'm going to then go to my palettes and let's put those in a position. Um, let's go for centre stage. I'm then going to chuck those in a colour as well, something like that. And let's go to our groups. I'm going to grab the alpha spots. I've got a palette for those as well. And I might actually pop those in a gobo as well. Something like that. So when you create a lighting state that you're happy with, we can then record that. Uh, and I'm go so going to record it onto my UDK. So I'm gonna open my virtual front panel again. And what I can do is I can tap my record button. And when I do that, any empty UDK is are going to flash away at me. So UDKs 2, 3 and 4 are flashing. Uh, the reason one isn't is because it's got something on there already. There's already something stored to that UDK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and tap UDK number 2. My UDK stopped flashing, my record LED turns off and that means that that has saved that lighting state for me. Um, to view what's recorded on your UDKs, um, on your uh, console you can go to the faders window. In the faders window, you uh, first of all, the main body of the window shows you what your faders on the console are currently doing. But running along the top of this window, we've got four boxes, and those boxes represent your four UDKs. Uh, and I can see here, it's saying channel data. I've got channel data on UDK number two. Uh, much like if you record onto a playback, um, if we want to go and play that lighting state back, first of all, we can go and do a double tap of clear on our console. Doing that clears out all of our manual control changes. And now I've done that, I can go and tap my UDK. I pressed and held it and I can see that my lighting state is recalled. When I let go of that UDK, the lighting state turns off. Now the reason for that is we've got a little bit of information in our faders window. 
So we can say UDK number two, it's got channel data on it. Yep, that's what we've just recorded. But it's also saying here that it is set to flash. Uh, and that is referring to the button function. So by default, when you record a lighting state onto a UDK, it will have a flash function. And that means that it's going to output whilst the button is held down. But we have various settings available to that UDK. Uh, and the first of those is indeed the button function. So to go into the settings of a UDK, you can press and hold the setup key and tap the UDK. And that will open the UDK settings. The first one in here is the flash mode, and that is your button function. So I could go and say, change that from a flash to a latch, and click OK. I now can see that that is set to latch in my faders window, and I could now go and tap that UDK, and my lighting state will turn on. Tap it again, and it will turn off. I can also use the on-screen UDK button in the faders window. So that's also useful for accessing your UDKs if you're remotely controlling the console uh, from the Xeros monitor applications as well. Um, so that we can keep track of what we've got on our UDKs, we can of course name them. Um, so if you wish to name a UDK, go ahead and tap the name key on your console and then go and give your UDK a tap. And that allows us to then set the UDK. So I'm just going to call this lighting state. Uh, and that name is then displayed at the bottom of my UDK um, information in the faders window here. So we've looked at recording and we've also looked at naming our UDKs as well. Um, if I go and output that lighting state on stage, I might decide, um, ah, right, well, I need to add in a little bit of front light to that lighting state. And so I can actually update my UDKs. Um, much like updating a queue, the first thing we're going to need to go ahead and do is make our changes. So I'm going to go and grab 35, I'm going to home it. I'm then going to go to my pan and tilt grid. And I'm going to use that to very quickly get a bit of front light on my singer. I'm going to then, that's that's too bright. I'm going to go and dim that down a touch. So I'm going to go and say uh, at 50, enter. Mm, still needs to be a little bit lower. Let's go at 30. That'll do. So that's just bringing a little bit of front light onto my performer. Uh, what I might also decide is actually um, my group one fixtures. So I'm going to go and do group one enter, which were my backlights there. Actually, they're quite bright as well. So I might want to make those a slightly darker blue. Something like that. So when you've made your changes, so I can see now I've got a mixture of reds and yellows. So reds being my manual values and yellows being the values that are coming from the UDK. So when I've got a mixture of those values, yellows from the UDK and also the manual changes, I can then update the UDK. Uh, and to do that, I can go and tap the update button on my console, and then any programmed UDKs this time are going to be flashing away at you. So I can go and tap that UDK. I'm going to double tap clear, and I can now see that that fixture 35 has turned from red to yellow. So I now know, yep, my updates have been taken. That light has now been added into that UDK for me. So that's how we can record. We've looked at naming, and we've also looked there at how we can update our uh, UDKs as well. Um, what you can do is if actually I needed to make a whole new lighting state, so I could go and say, for example, 21 through 28, turn those pictures on, I'm going to put them in colour 10. If I were to go record and tap a UDK that isn't flashing at me, I get a pop-up. 
and the pop-up would say, uh, there's something already on here, what would you like to do? So I do then have the ability to overwrite what was on there. In my case, I'm gonna click cancel and actually repeat the process and say record to UDK3. And that now gives me access to flash my psych in blue if I need to. If you wish to delete a UDK, just tap the delete key and this time any programmed UDKs are going to flash at you. I'm going to go and tap UDK number three and you will then get the pop-up to say are you sure you wish to delete that UDK. Uh, and in my case here I'm going to actually say yes and my UDK has now gone. Um, now, we looked at the fact that we can change the button function. We can change it to be latch rather than flash. Um, as well as that, we have various um, settings available. So let's go back into the UDK settings um, to take a look at some of those other options. Again, I'm going to hold setup and I'm going to go ahead and tap my UDK. And in here I can see the various settings. Um, let's take a look at the fade times. Fade times by default will be zero seconds, and we get a fade time for each attribute on the console. So I've got my fade up, down, and then color, beam, shape, and position. So what that means is when I press that UDK button, how long will it take for the various values to get from their current state to the programmed levels? So in my case of UDK number two, as we can see there, when I tap that, well, first of all, my intensity is just flashing up to full. Um, but also, I can see those, those beams swinging around as they go from their defaults to get to the recorded levels. So actually, I might want to say, okay, well, rather than those fixtures snapping round, actually, I want a fade time on the position. So to do that, let's dive into those settings. I can go to my position fade and I'm actually going to go and set that to be three seconds and click OK. So now when I press my UDK, I can see that those beams will this time fade in, but the intensity still snapped. The intensity still snapped and the color did as well. So actually I'm going to go and say that I want some intensity fades there as well. Now notice we've got a separate up and down. So when we can say that when we press our button to turn the lighting state on, we can have one certain set of time. So I might want to say three. But then when we press our button again to turn it off, we can have a different time. So I might want to say actually the fade down is a little bit quicker. And click OK. So this time, my fixtures are fading on. I can see those values fading up in my output window. And my fade down is then much quicker. So we've looked at intensity, we've we've uh, spoken about position, I could also put a fade on the colour as well, and we've then also got beam and shape. So shape are things like your gobos, uh, beam are things like your lenses. So the nice thing about that is you could have your gobos snapping in, but if you had a fixtures with a zoom, you could have the zoom fading in whilst the gobos snap. So you've got that extra level of control by going in and setting each of your attributes to have different fade times. Uh, also in here we have release. By default release is set to yes. Let's take a look at what we mean by that. So if I press my UDK we see those lights get uh, move from their defaults to recorded levels. If I tap that UDK again, they fade off, and then they will return to their default values. Um, I can see that, because if I were to just go and say one, group 1 at at, I can see they've returned back to that location. They're no longer in the location that the UDK had them in. Whereas what I could do is, if I go into my UDK settings, I could actually say, don't release. Set the release to no and click OK. And I get no release displayed in the UDK. What this will mean now 
is I'm going to tap it once and they'll get from their defaults to my recorded values. I'm going to click it again and they simply fade off. If I were to click it again, you'll see I just simply see the intensity raise again because when I'm turning that UDK off, they are not releasing. So all that's happening is just the intensity has been taken down. To see that happening, if I were to go and say group one at at this time, I can see that they're still in their color and their position, um, which is what the UDK told them to be in. Uh, if I were to go and say group one enter and go source, notice in your parameter table, um, I can see that, yep, their pan and tilt and their color information is indeed coming from that UDK. Um, if I go back into the settings of that UDK, and I'm going to say, yes, they do release and click OK. That means that whenever that UDK is in its off state, it is no longer having control over those lights. So that's just another useful option to be aware of. So that's our channel data UDKs. That's all of the various options we have for our channel data UDKs, um, how we can record them, update, delete them, um, and also some of those settings we've got available too. Let's take a look at some shortcut UDKs this time. So the three, three UDKs, channel data, shortcut, and advanced. Let's take a look at those shortcuts. Um, so what we mean by shortcut is we've got the ability to put a macro, a group, a palette, or a single fixture directly onto one of our UDKs. So a moment ago, I was quite regularly saying group one enter to select group one. Group one enter, doing that is exactly the same as me going to my groups window and clicking on that group of lights. But saving me having to type in any syntax or indeed change window, I might decide that actually it'd be useful to put that group directly onto one of my UDKs so that I can just literally hit a UDK and those lights select. Um, to do that, we can program our shortcut UDK. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in some syntax. So if I want group one on, UD, on my UDK, I can say group one and then tap record. And you'll notice that my faders are not flashing at me. Usually when you press the record button, uh, your lighting console is going to be flashing away at you to show you all of the available options of, of, of where you can store that channel data to. However, the console knows that we're not recording channel data and instead we are recording a group. So I've, I've done group one record and I'm then going to go and tap uh, UDK number three. And that has put group one onto UDK number three. Notice that the uh, my previous one that we recorded said channel data. This one here says group one and it's also got the group name. Um, and so now I can go ahead and just literally click that UDK and it selects those lights for me. It's exactly the same as me going group one enter or as I mentioned, going to my groups window and finding those. So now I could go straight away and say that group of lights home them, and I can then go straight away and start to gain control of those. So you can see that's a really powerful tool and really useful. So we can put groups onto our UDKs, um, but what we can also do is put palettes onto our UDKs. So whether that be color, beam, shape, position, or even effects, you could put any of those palette types onto a UDK. Um, so for this, I'm actually going to go and delete my first UDK. I'm going to go and say delete that one. Yep, just so I give myself a little bit more uh, space. And let's say that I regularly use colour palette number 10. That's my blue colour. So this time I'm going to say colour 10, record, and I'm going to go and click UDK number 1. And I've now put colour palette 10 on there. Um, 
again, if I were to now go and select those lights, I can then turn them on, and I can then apply my palette, all without needing to dive into any different windows on my touch screens. Um, let's do another one. Let's do position. Uh, let's say that we want our uh, fanned position, which is position palette number four. So this time I'm going to type in the syntax uh, position for record, and I'm going to go and tap UDK number four. Uh, and again, I'm going to go to my faders window, and so I can now see that I can go and grab control of those lights. I could put them in my colour, in my position, and then I could go ahead and turn them on by double tapping my at key on the console. Taking that a step further, we of course have the programmer time functionality. Um, you can access programmer time from the Z window, or alternatively, you can access it from an empty playback fader. So if I press and hold setup and tap an empty playback faders button, I can go and choose programmer time and click OK. And I've now got my fader here that can be used to set that time in seconds. So if I go and enable that by tapping its button, now changes that I make will follow that time and that includes these UDKs. So I can fade to my colour and I can fade to my position as well using my UDKs uh, in conjunction with the programmer time function. Let's get rid of that and turn programmer time off for the time being. So that's our palettes. Um, let's just take a look at the e effect one. So I'm going to go and delete um, my uh, position palette from my UDK. And this time, let's say that if I go to my effects window, let's say that I regularly use my blue sparkle, effect number 28. So this time, I'm going to go and say effect 28 record onto UDK4, and I can now use UDK4, give that a tap, and it will start that effect across my lights. I'm going to double tap clear now on my console to uh, release that and stop the control. So that's my, so we've looked at groups, we've looked at how we can use palettes. Uh, we can also put macros onto our user definable keys. Um, so Go check out our dedicated macros training session if you want to learn more about macros. Um, but in exactly the same way that I've done my palettes, I could go ahead and say macro one, record, and tap an empty UDK. And I could go and stick that macro directly onto a UDK as well. That's really useful for if you want to be able to recall, um, for example, syntax strings directly from a button. So you could press a button and it would recall a string of syntax for you. Um, as I said, go check out our macro session if you want to know more about uh, macros. I'm going to go and delete UDK4. Uh, and the last thing you could have on a UDK uh, when it comes to shortcuts is a single fixture. So let's say um, that a particular fixture you find that you use all the time. So let's find a good example. Um, let's say that our fixture 35 here, which is our kind of front of house fixture, let's say you're regularly using that for your front light. I could go and say 35 enter, tap record, and tap an empty UDK. And so I just selected the fixture, recorded that to a UDK, and this time notice how we see fixture. It's not channel data, it is a fixture. And so I can now grab and select that individual light directly from that UDK. If you need to have multiple lights selected from a UDK, of course that allows you to record a group first and then create a group shortcut UDK. Um, but if you just need to grab control of a single fixture regularly, uh, you could stick that directly onto a UDK, as we've done there. So that is our shortcut UDKs. 
So the third function that our user definable keys can be uh, is an advanced function. So let's take a look at that. Uh, to configure advanced functions, you can hold setup and tap an empty UDK. So I'm going to go and delete UDK number four. And I'm now going to dive into the settings of that empty UDK. And that will take us into the UDK settings. And in here, we have a normal and we have a shifted drop down. And what we mean by that is we have this button can have two functions. One function when the button is pressed normally, and then an additional function uh, when the button is pressed with the shift key held. Now, both of these drop downs offer the same options. Um, but it just means you can customise which ones are accessed by a normal press and which ones are accessed by a shifted press. So let's explore all of these options now. So first of all, let's take a look at parking. Um, the first couple of options are park and unpark. So I'm going to go and set this normal function to be park. And very, a very common way of then using this is to set the shifted function to be unpark. And I'm now going to go and click OK. I now get the normal function displayed and then the shifted function displayed in brackets. Uh, and if you're not familiar with what parking does, um, it's a way of essentially locking a fixture to do whatever it's currently doing on stage. So let's say that I say five and six, Let's put them in color 10. Let's put them in position three. And let's say that I want to park those fixtures. So what I mean by that is nothing else on my console will be able to change that fixture. They will be parked in that intensity, color, position, everything. So to park fixtures, select them, make sure they're selected, and then go ahead and hit your park UDK. And doing that will give them a red background with a black intensity percentage. If you go to source, you're going to see parked. So now if I were to double tap clear, those fixtures stay on. They are parked. Um, and when I mean that, they really are. Not even the Grandmaster or Blackout will be able to affect those lights. But I can still program them blind. So if right now I were to go and say 1 through 10, at 20, colour 2, enter, position 5, enter, which is those fixtures in the air. Now bearing in mind I have said 1 through, so I have sent the, that colour, position and intensity to fixture 5 and 6 as well. They haven't changed though because they're currently parked. But if I were to go and record this lighting state onto a playback, and I were to play that back, I can see that the lights that I currently have control of, they respond correctly. Um, but if I were to go and unpark fixture five and six, I could still have control of them. So I've been able to program them blind into that queue. So let's take a look. I'm going to go and select 5 and 6. I'm going to go and unpark by holding shift and tapping my park UDK. They then go back to doing whatever they, they're supposed to be doing. And I can see that my playback 3 has them recorded in that colour and position that we created earlier. So parking is a really useful tool. It allows you to park fixtures, but still program them in the background. Um, really useful for house lights as well. If you're doing your rehearsals, you could have your house lights parked on, but you know if you're not telling them to turn on, whether that be from you know your channel faders or your syntax, you know that you won't be recording them into your cues. If I were to just go five and six at at park, double tap clear, and then record onto this fader here, I haven't recorded those lights. If I were to go and unpark them, and then raise my fader, 
they won't come on because parked values are not included in your queues. I'm going to go and delete that playback. So parking is really useful um, for things like uh, house lights, um, but also fixtures that you might not want to come on. Maybe there's a fixture that's developed a fault, maybe there's a fixture that's been knocked over or something like that. Um, let's take our fixture 5 and 6 again. I could go and say 5 and 6 enter, park. And I could park it at 0. And again, now when I go and try to use all of my lighting states, you'll see now that those middle pair of lights, I don't have access to them. They are parked at zero. Um, and to regain control, I would have to select them and unpark them. So that's parking and a really useful tool to be aware of. Let's dive back into the UDK settings and take a look at the next option. So I'm gonna go into the settings of UDK number four. I'm going to go and set no action to the shifted function this time. But this time on the normal function, let's take a look at knockout and click OK. So now this UDK is acting as a knockout function. The best way to describe knockout is releasing an individual fixture. If you have a lighting state on stage and you were to press and hold clear, and tap the playbacks button, that releases the whole playback. That playback no longer has control over the lights. But knockout allows you just to release an individual fixture or group of fixtures. So this time, again, let's use our one we programmed earlier. If I were to go and say five and six enter, knockout, that takes them temporarily out of whatever they're doing. It releases them temporarily. The next time that I were to trigger that though, I have control of them again. So it's just a temporary way of releasing individual fixtures. Let's start, jump back into our UDKs and take a look at some other options. The next option down is clear fixture. Personally, when I'm programming the console, one of my UDKs will always be clear fixture. It is a really useful one to be aware of. I'm going to click OK. Uh, if I were to go and say group 1, at at, hopefully you're quite familiar. Uh, and if you've done uh, some of our discover training, you'll be very familiar with the fact that if I were to go and double tap clear right now, that clears all of my va manual values from those fixtures. However, clear fixture allows me to just clear my manual values from certain fixtures. So let's say I've gone and done one through 10 at at, let's have them in color 10 again, let's have them in position two. Um, this time, let's go and say I'm going to have 21 through 28. Let's have them at 20%. Again, let's, them, let's have them in a red. Uh, and then let's say that we go and say um, 11 through 20 at at. Let's put them in position 6. And then we realise, ah, I didn't mean to have my sight lights in. I need to get rid of my sight lights. Um, well, a really quick way to clear any manual values that you might have sent to those fixtures is go and select them. So I'm going to go and say 21 through 28, enter. And I can then go ahead and tap my clear fixture UDK and that clears out all manual control values for those particular lights. So it sends their uh, colour, their beam, their shape, their position, their intensity back to the defaults if there are no playbacks running or back to having whatever playbacks are running back to them, them those playbacks having control of the lights. So it's a really good and quick way of releasing, uh, of just clearing the programmer for those particular fixture. Nice thing about it is you can backspace. 
So if you clear fixture, that's written into your command line. And I can go and backspace to undo. If you double tap clear to clear the whole programmer, you cannot undo that. You have lost those manual values. So if I were to go enter, enter to select everything, then go ahead and say clear fixture, I can backspace to get back to where I was. So that's just something really useful to be aware of, is that if you find that you're quite often clearing the programmer and then realizing, ah, actually I needed access to those fixtures still, I hadn't finished programming them. Um, actually you could use clear fixture instead as a way of giving you the ac access to undo. So clear fixture is a way of you being able to define what gets cleared when you clear your programmer. Let's jump back into those uh, UDK settings. And the next one down is highlight. So let's have a look at highlight and click OK. Um, highlight is a really useful tool to find fixtures in your rig, basically. Because I could go and say one, highlight, and fixture one is then going to come on. It's highlighted for me on stage. It's going to go to uh, full by default, and it's going to be in white. Now, when you've got fixtures highlighted, you can use the next and previous function. Uh, next and previous can be accessed by holding the shift key and using the left and right arrow keys. So if I go shift right now, I can actually start to go next through my rig. And notice that each press of my right arrow key on the console is typing next into my command line. And so this is a really good way of me just starting to flash through my rig to be able to see what lights I've got. Taking that a step further, I could go and say group one, at at, color 10, enter, position, three, enter. This time I'm going to go and say one, highlight, and notice how in this instance my fixture has stayed where it is, but it's come on in white. And so I can now again step through each of those fixtures using next and previous. I can step through and I can easily see which is which. If I were to turn highlight off, that fixture goes back to doing whatever it was doing. So the ideal thing about highlight is it allows you to go through and tweak your focus of your lights. So I could go and give that fixture a, a bit of a tweak, go to the next light, give that a bit of a tweak, and you can just work through your rig, tweaking your positions one by one until you've got to a location you're happy with. And then you can, of course, record that position palette. Taking that a step further, if I were to go group one, enter, I would then use my right arrow key, notice what we get this time. We get a dark orange selection around the group and then the normal selection around the individual fixture. So if this time we say group one, at at, color 10, enter, position four, enter, and then I do a next and go highlight, because I've done next after having a group selected, my next and previous simply work within the group. So when I get to the end of that group, I wrap back round to the beginning. Again, really useful for focusing, because it allows you to work through all of those fixtures. When you get to the last, and you've maybe gone through and you've tweaked them all, you can wrap back round again and just get those fine-tuned to where you need them. So to clarify, highlight is a really useful tool for turning your lights on, sending them to white, but allowing you to tweak their position. Now, as we can see, by default, it is displayed in yellow. It will always be displayed in yellow. Uh, and the intensity is going to 100. However, that value, the intensity that the fixture goes to when highlighted, can be configured. To change the highlight value, Go to Setup, go to Settings, and in Operational, 
you've got highlight options and you can change the high value. So I might want to go and say, actually, I want the high value to be 70% and then exit setup. And if I were to go one highlight this time, the fixture will then go to 70%. I'm going to go back into setup, go to settings and put that back to 100. Now, there is a shortcut for highlight, and that is a shift and home. So if you do shift and home, you'll notice that that will also get you your highlight function. So if you don't want to use up a UDK, instead, you could actually just go ahead and do a shift and home, and that will give you access to the highlight feature as well. Let's take a look at some other options. Let's go in, and this time, let's look at the penultimate option of Rem Dim. And Rem Dim stands for Remainder Dim. So if I were to go and say Group 1, at at, and I were to then say 5, enter, and I were to then go and say Rem Dim, it dims the remaining fixtures. That's what we're seeing. It's going to dim the remaining fixture, leaving the fixture that I'm currently working on, on stage, and the others are taken out. We can see that because we're getting yellow zeros. A little bit like we highlight, we can adjust the rem dim value. So we can adjust what value those lights are taken down to. To do that, go into setup, go to settings, and this time we can set the rem dim low value. So I might want to go and say, actually, I just want you going to 20%. And so this time when I rem dim, those remaining fixtures only dim down to 20%. Uh, and so rem dim is a really useful tool to allow you to focus. If you imagine you've got all of those lights on on stage and then you just want to see where a particular fixture is pointing, go and rem dim and you can then just see that fixture, the others are dimmed. Tap it again, and you'll toggle back to where you were. So that's our remainder dim function. I'm going to go back in and set my low value back to the 0% default. The last UDK advanced function to be aware of is global tap tempo. So if you set that, you can use your UDK to go and tap a tempo. To find that tempo, tap your Z button, and you will see that your th third encoder wheel displays your global BPM. A little bit like what we did with our programmer time earlier on, I can also set an empty fader to be the global tap tempo value as well. So again, I'm going to go and tap uh, press and hold setup and tap an empty playback. And I'm going to go and say global tap tempo, click OK. And so when I go and tap on my UDK, I can see that value live updating on my faders window. Nice thing about do using a UDK is it's a nice soft cherry key. So it's a, if you're going and tapping that regularly, um, it's not one of the clicky buttons under the faders. I'm going to go and tap that and take it down to zero. A couple of last things before we finish for today. Uh, one of those is page locking. Uh, you might have noticed throughout all of the settings of all of these various UDKs, that's the one option we haven't spoken about yet. Now, by default, on whatever type of UDK you're using, whether it be a shortcut, channel data, or indeed an extra function, by default, your UDKs will be page locked, and that's indicated by our little padlock icon here on the UDKs. That means no matter what page you're on on your console, those four buttons are going to remain the same. However, you can turn page lock off, and that means that the buttons will page with your playback faders. And so that means that you can actually have 10 pages 
of the four UDKs, giving you 40 UDKs in total. So, let's take a look at that now. In my case, I'm going to go and delete UDK number four. And I'm going to go and delete UDK number three as well, because I don't need those. But I might decide I have one through ten at at, and I might re record those onto UDK number four. But I'm going to go into the settings of UDK number four and turn page lock off. Set it to no. My padlock disappears. If I change page, I can now put something on the second page. So this time I'm going to go and say 21 through 28 at at colour 2 enter record UDK4. So now when I'm on page 2 I've got my red psych, page 1 on that UDK I had my overheads. If I go and change those to latch using my flash mode option I can then start to mix. So I could go ahead and tap my red psych and you'll see there that if I go and page down that is still on the button. So I still have access to it on the second page. Again if I press on my lighting state there and page up again I still have on page one that lighting state on stage. So no matter what page I can still access that UDK. But if I'm on page one, I can tap that, turn it off, go to page two, tap that and get my red psych. So that is a really useful tool to be aware of. So that's page locking with our channel data. But I've also got this exactly the same options for our shortcuts. If you go into the settings of a shortcut UDK, you've just simply got your page lock option. So I could go and say, for example, have color palette at 10 on this page. But on the second page, I could have my position palette three. So I could go and say position three, record to there. And so this time I could go and say group one, at at, put them in a color, change page, put them in a position. And so turning page lock off in some scenarios can be really helpful to increase the number of UDKs that you have access to. Again, same with the advanced functions as well. If you've gone in and configured your park, for example, you could go and say you don't want it to be page locked. And you can then have a different function on each of your pages. So that's useful to be aware of. The last thing I wanted to go through is your UDK defaults. So if you go into setup, you go to defaults, you've got UDK defaults. And so you can change the default flash mode. That's a really useful one if you're finding that you're always programming uh, your latches, for example, your, your, your latch lighting state. You might decide to change the flash mode to latch by default. Similarly, you can do the same for release as well. And so you can change those for any future UDKs you, that you then might go ahead and program. So I hope you found that useful uh, in this session exploring UDKs. We've looked at how all of the various options that we can use to record, update, delete, name our channel data UDKs. We've also looked at how we can put shortcuts directly onto our UDKs. And we've also lastly seen some of the extra advanced options that you've got as well. Um, a lot of people might come to a flex console and think, oh, well, I haven't got a REMDIM button. Well, you can go and configure a UDK to be one. And you've got various extra options that you can access using those UDKs. So I hope you found that useful. If you do have any questions, as always, do just drop us an email to support at 088.com. And I'll see you on the next session. Take care.